Hi, I'm Billy Brown. I'm a nature writer with Grid Magazine and also with phillynature.org. And we are at the John Hines National Wildlife Refuge, which is sort of at the boundary of Philadelphia and Delaware County, kind of near the airport on the Delaware River. We're here because they're holding a snakehead roundup. What they're doing is going into the water with really big nets and trying to catch as many of an exotic invasive fish called the northern snakehead, as well as Eurasian carp, which are also not from around here. And so both of these are fish that are from other parts of the world and were introduced into our local waters and have had some negative ecosystem impacts as they have spread and become established. The northern snakeheads has happened just over the past few years, carp much longer ago. But both of them, because of the impact they have on the ecosystem here, the refuge and staff and a whole bunch of volunteers are working to scoop them out of the water and do that as part of a big habitat restoration project. So a couple terms that we use a lot when we're talking about this kind of situation are invasive and exotic. There are things that you might not use in this way in your usual conversation. So when we say exotic, it just means that something's not from the place where you're talking about. So if you think of your garden, eggplants are not from this part of the world. Eggplants are exotic. Hostas, you might grow as flowers in your garden. Again, exotic. Now, the invasive part is when they become a problem for surrounding ecosystems. So the hostas in your garden, the eggplant in your garden, they tend not to grow much outside of your garden. And so it's really not much of an environmental problem. Things become a problem when they start leaving the places where they're first introduced and then, and then competing with other native organisms for resources out in the environment. So the problem, for example, here with northern snakeheads is that, again, they're not from our area. And the concern is that they, as really big top predators in ecosystems, are eating a lot of the native fish in ways that the native fish didn't evolve being used to. So the concern is that they'll have a negative impact on these populations. And so that is what leads a place like the refuge to try to get as many out of the ecosystem as they can. So we're here at the John Hines National Wildlife Refuge with their snakehead roundup. Um, and we are here with Garrett. Garrett, who are you? What do you do? Hello, my name is Garrett White. I am the biological science technician here at the refuge. My job is to plan out the habitat management and habitat restoration here at the refuge. So what are northern snakeheads? What are these carp? And mm -hmm. why, are, why are we doing something to get them out of the water? So today we're doing our uh, invasive fish roundup. So yeah. basically we'll take all, we'll take, we use our staff and our nets, make a giant circle, and then scoop the fish into a contained area to take out the fish the, that we don't want. These are including the northern snakehead and the common carp, both of which are from Asia, that can alter the fish composition and the habitat structure of this impoundment here. And so, um, talk us through, what's the process? What are the people behind us doing? Sure, so the people behind us are our all-star team of staff members and volunteers and high school work crew that are using uh, our long nets here to corral as many fish as we can, all the fish, into an area. And then they are sorting through the fish to take the good fish and put them back into the impoundment and then take out the fish that we don't want, the snakehead and the carp, and take them out of the impoundment. So the reason that we target these two fish are the carp are herbivores, and so they really eat all the underwater plants. And then you have the northern snakehead, which are a top-level predator. So they will actually stay in that vegetation, but they'll eat the frogs, they'll eat baby turtles, and then also any smaller fish, including their own snakehead, the smaller ones. And what that does is it really alters both the habitat structure, like the plants, but then also the fish composition. So what percentages of each kind of fish do we have here? And that affects not only our birds, but also the stuff that we eat here as well, when you're, the things that you're targeting while you're fishing. 
One thing to take home about these discussions of exotic invasive organisms is that you should do your best never to release something new out into the environment. Do you ever have problems here at the refuge with people releasing pets or other animals into the, into the refuge? At times, it probably happens. It's hard to know if it happens all the time. Uh, I did just recently come across red-eared sliders and yellow-bellied turtles, both of which, this is they're native to the United States, but to the southeast United States. But there's populations here of those that were probably released from pet trade. So these are folks who, are, you know, they're cute pets when you see them at the aquarium, but then they get bigger than the tank, and or, you know, your child goes off to college or just heads out, and you say, oh, I don't want to take care of this thing. Let me go release it back into the environment. And while that's really great and it sounds wonderful, it ends up hurting everything in the long run. Both the individual that might not survive because it doesn't necessarily know what to eat and how to eat and everything else, or then they actually might actually be killing them because if they can't survive the winters or something like that. So we always tell people, don't release pets, find somebody else who can take care of it if you can't. Uh, there are organizations that'll take care of those kinds of things. Thank you very much for watching. Again, this has been a partnership between Grid Magazine and phillynature.org. If you like what you're seeing here, please read more about nature in Philadelphia on phillynature.org. And of course, subscribe to Grid Magazine and support environmental journalism right here in Philadelphia. And of course, we want to thank the John Hines National Wildlife Refuge for being so generous, letting us film this big project of theirs. And I can't recommend it highly enough as a wonderful place to come out and enjoy a whole lot of nature really close to the city. Thanks. Man.